Welcome back. Last month, Governor Spencer Cox prepared an emergency declaration due to drought conditions here across the state. Unfortunately, our snowpack, at least in March, was only at about 80% of normal, which is not good, especially as we head into summer. And also, we've had very warm temperatures. The snow is melting fast. It has been dry, so it's a big concern across the state, especially as we move into the hot, dry months. So joining us here to tell us what we can do individually at our homes and what, how we can conserve water within our households. Perry Bratt is joining us today. He's the president of Stratton and Bratt Landscaping. He has some great advice on not only what individuals and families can do to help conservation, but also what can developers do and what everything that we can work together in hopes of helping to prevent drought conditions to continue and in hopes to conserve water individually. Perry, we're so grateful you're here with us. Thank you for being here. Thank you, appreciate the opportunity. What are some things that we can do? You're the president of a landscape company, so this is what you think about every single day, water conservation. So let's start there actually. What do you do within your company to help conserve water, especially as we're looking to head into some very dry months? So I've been doing this for 46 years this month, and uh, we've learned a lot. When we first started, uh, water wasn't an issue, and we just dumped the water on plants and lawns and, and uh, watched and observed over the years what uh, makes sense and what doesn't. But one of the number one things we do is we provide the owners with a maintenance manual that emphasizes in bold and italics over and over, don't overwater. We lose more plants from overwatering than we do from underwatering uh, by far, probably two or three times as many plants from overwatering than underwatering. And as much as we try to teach homeowners to not overwater, it seems like inevitably when we come back uh, to look at our one year guarantee and see plants that have died, there's plenty of uh, evidence that they have overwatered. And I don't want to make light of the situation, but it seems to be that in some neighborhoods there's a bit of, of a competition on who has the greenest grass, whose looks the most lush, and that can cause a lot of odor overwatering and a lot of unnecessary water usage, which is the problem here. And let me address plants first. When a plant gets overwatered, most of them, at least 90% of them, uh, not the evergreens, but the, the deciduous or those with leaves, will wilt. And people think consequently they need more water, so they dump more water on them because they're wilting. But in, in essence, what's happening is they're under stress because those roots cannot get oxygen. This applies to lawns as well as uh, uh, any of our shrubs and perennials and trees. And the, the roots take in oxygen, and then the leaves give off oxygen. And when we have too much water, especially if we have clay-type soils, which most of our soils are here in Utah, uh, oxygen can't get to those roots and the tree is under stress. And we've seen areas where we'll, we'll do put 100 trees in along a street. There's a broken head maybe by one tree. And so the tree gets too much water. And that's the trees that bugs and insects and disease will attack. Mother Nature has made them that way. And so we'll lose that tree, maybe not from too much water, but maybe from an infestation of bugs. Now, back to your question on, on grass. Um, grass is no different than shrubs, et cetera. If you get too much water, the oxygen can't get to those roots and consequently the grass struggles. It's susceptible to disease. It will not green up as well as it would if it didn't have too much water. And um, the, the consequence of that is not only a higher water bill, but bad looking lawn. That's fascinating because I think you're exactly right. Sometimes you see a plant that looks wilted or a lawn that looks a little yellow and not lush and green and you think just add more water, add more water, which isn't the answer. So it really makes a lot of sense to be careful with your water consumption. Yes. Um, what we tell people after we turn a job over to them is to look at the grass and let it go a bluish tint before you add water to it. That's generally the sign that uh, lawns have that, that tell the owner that uh, needs a little bit more water. And it's far better to add a little water several times during the week or month than add a lot of water uh, once a week or once every week and a half. That goes in a conflict with what our grandparents taught us. They taught us, and, and a lot of times they were watering with irrigation water, 
they flood their lawns and just try to get as much water on those lawns as possible. But most of that water would go down and if the clay would let it, it would seep through that clay or the soil would let it, it would seep through that clay and uh, not come back up. There'd be a little that would come back up to the roots, but it was just a waste of water. But we've continued to do that thinking more water is better and murmuring when the cities uh, put us on rations, et cetera. But if instead we just water just enough, most grass roots go down maybe four to five inches. There's some species will go down six or more inches. And so you don't need water to go down any more than that. Uh, it's just gonna go down in the aquifer and consequently be a waste. Another great option to consider, especially as we look at drought conditions and wanna conserve water is zero scaping. Yes, uh, it's been amazing the last 20 years how much uh, zero scaping has uh, increased. Uh, we used to primarily put bark mulch on the soil. Now we put uh, as much uh, rock mulch and, and fabric on the soil as we do bark mulch. I'm personally a fan of the bark mulch for a number of reasons that we don't have the time to discover, to, to talk about here. But uh, you'll see a lot of rock mulch and fabric out there in the landscapes. Um, I would advise not to put the fabric down if you're putting bark mulch down because the bark will just end up decomposing and make a beautiful topsoil on top of that fabric. And the consequence to that is then the weeds will get in that nice topsoil and grow. The roots adhere to the fabric. You pull the fabric up when you pull the weeds. So we actually charge homeowners more if they have fabric down. Now that, uh, that uh, isn't, that's not going to affect uh, water conservation so much, but the more weeds you have, the more water you're going to use. So eliminate the weeds because those weeds will sap the, the water right out of the ground. And Perry, you address this a lot. Where can we get more information about what you do, your company, and about water conservation in general? Um, we, I, I mentioned the manual. We try to educate people. We, we refer them to videos and different podcasts that talk about water conservation. And the, the, the important thing is, is we help them understand that most plants, such as shrubs, perennials, trees, et cetera, will only take a fifth to maybe a tenth amount of water that lawns will take. So the less lawn, the more savings you're gonna have with the uh, with, uh, uh, water. And so we do recommend that. A lot of people don't wanna do that because it needs more maintenance if they don't maintain correctly. Um, if we can teach them and educate them that if you'll stay ahead of the weeds and get take care of them with pre-emergence or by weeding when they're really small, it will not cost as much per square foot to take care of the shrubs and perennials as it does the lawn, which you have to mow every week and prune every week or trim every week and fertilize uh, three or four times, which is a whole nother uh, item. We fertilize too much, way too much. We're putting way too much salts in our soil and we make a lot of money ripping out grass because Jones wants to look better than his neighbor and he can't get his grass to go green because he's got too much salts, which are primarily the nitrates in the, in, in the soil. They kill the microorganisms that make it so those plants can't take in as much water and nutrients as easily. Well, thank you so much, Perry Bratt, for joining us today from Stratton and Bratt Landscapes. We appreciate this important discussion about how we individually can conserve water as we head into a dry summer. We'll be back with Dr. Phil Bondurant from Summit County Health Department right after this.